Yeah. Yeah. Pro Fan Sports Podcast. Let's get it. Pro Fan. Pro fan. Tune into the program. Yeah. Every single week, get the dope fam. Sean on the mic, very flat too. You know Keep you up dead, that's what we do. Yeah, pro yeah. Fan. Tune into the program. Pro Fan. Tune into the program. Pro Fan. Tune into the program. Every single week, get the dope fam. Yo, 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 what it do, everybody? It's your boy, John Altador with Pro Fan Sports Podcast, where the fans of the pros go back at you with another one. My boys, Vlad and Barry. What's good, fellas? What's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, guys, we're here. Uh, uh, excited, as always, for another great show that we have for y'all. So uh, we're on to episode 47, three more till 50. We're almost at the big 5-0. Episode 47. And now, uh, if you're watching this, you know, just like I say right now, please subscribe to the channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, that's the only way you can help us grow. And lucky for you, it's uh entirely for free. So subscribe. But um, number 47, man. Who we got for us, Barry? I can't even think of a 47 right now. Ooh, um, yeah, I got a couple in mind. Uh one of them is uh, John Lynch, who just got elected yes. into the Hall of Fame. Yes. Uh, so he was definitely a really good 47. And uh, he's with the Cruz, Niners now, right? Right, right. GM of the he's Niners. The Niners right. GM. He won a Super Bowl with the, you know, Tampa Bay Bucks, who just won the Super Bowl on Sunday. Again? Mm -hmm. Right, ex exactly. So, uh, yeah, I you know he definitely had a great career without question. And, one of the best safeties that I've, you know, seen play in the NFL, you know, my time watching the league. Um, so definitely shout out to him. And then uh, Tory Krug, who used to play for the Bruins. Bruins. Now he's with the uh, St. Louis Blues. Blues, yeah. yeah. Know, our, who beat us a couple years ago. In, in the, the finals. Cup final, yep. Yeah. Game seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, but damn, it's far, this is a tough number. Cause, oh, um, Somebody I on the Celtics. Who wore 47? Mm hmm Well, maybe I'm thinking about 42. Never mind. Never mind. But another um guy, uh, another NBA guy who actually did wear 47 is you remember um Andre Karolinko, who used yes. to play for the Utah Jazz? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. He was uh for 47. He was actually pretty good. He, he was, was pretty good. He participated in a lot of the uh all-star games and stuff. He did, he did. He mm -hmm. was in very the events. active with that. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. So, yeah, no, he – Oh, the, I know – I love it that they used to call him AK-47. That was yep. his – That was nickname. his famous was, name. Right. I was, that's a dope nickname. Mm -hmm. Imagine having that as a nickname. That's pretty awesome. And pretty Wasn't he good with the threes? Was he good with the threes? He was like a 3 and D guy. That's pretty, it. Pretty, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, he was a good three-point shooter. And a good, you know, defensive guy who usually guard the, you know, team's leading scorer or like, you know, or their top, you know, wing uh, scorer on the other side. So, no, he had some good years for the Utah Jazz without question. For sure, man. So on to episode 47, um, as always, please follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, ProFans underscore sports. We're on Twitter.com slash ProFans sports, Facebook.com slash ProFans sports. And, of course, we're on YouTube. Uh, please subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, YouTube.com slash ProFans Sports. Our episodes drop every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m., and our videos drop on Wednesday, um, every Wednesday. So be on the lookout for those things. Share, like, comment, all that stuff helps the show, and we'll try to get back to you guys. Um, and as always, we're going to be talking about the NFL, you know, Super Bowl. You know, we'll break all that down, some NFL news uh, concerning the Patriots and the NFL as well. Uh, some NBA talk, Celtics breakdown, uh, some MLB signings happened over the last week. And then Barry's going to give you some, you know, Bruins breakdowns, see what's going on with the Bruins so far because they're on fire. Uh, and then oh, we'll yeah. do a yes, B-Money Lifestyle Person of the Week, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we're going to start off with the NFL. Fellas, man, the Super Bowl. So Super Bowl happened on Sunday, right? Um, and it was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. If you're on the rock, you know, if you don't know what was happening yesterday, and I know a lot of people 
um, you know, they've kind of like strayed away from the sports because of coronavirus and how it looks and everything, the aesthetics. Um, at least that's what I've been told a few times. But um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeated the Kansas City Chiefs 31-9. to uh, Patrick Mahomes went 26 for 49 uh, for 270 yards, zero touchdowns, and two interceptions. That's a stat line you've never seen in his career before. Um, Travis Kelsey caught 10 balls for 133 yards, zero TDs. If they had won the game, he would have been the MVP right there. Tyreek Hill, he went for seven for 73, zero touchdowns. And then you got Buccaneers where Tom Brady went 21 of 29 for 201 yards, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Leonard Fournette ran it 16 times for 86 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Rob Gronkowski, six receptions, uh, 67, touch, 67 yards and two touchdowns. Antonio Browns, five receptions, 22 yards and one touchdown. Right. Um, so, I mean, safe to say, you know, Bel I mean, I was going to say Belichick. <laughs> the Buccaneers <laughs> went in there and they did what they had to do. Um, so I know you guys have a lot of thoughts on the game. Right. So I'll ask you guys a few questions. What are the thoughts on the games? Uh, Brady, the Bucks defense, the referees, uh, Patrick Mahomes. Um, what does this loss mean to Mahomes? You know, that's the first two questions that I'm going to ask you guys. So let's get to it. How y'all feeling? Um, you know, as a Brady fan, this was such an enjoyable game to watch. One of the best Super Bowls Brady has ever played, specifically um, stats line. Um, he's He didn't make any mistake in the Super Bowl. No interceptions. Um, a lot of his yeah. Super Bowl, he's had at least one or two interceptions. Yeah. Uh, but this one was mistake-free. Mm -hmm. um, this was the largest um, he's won a Super Bowl by most of his the Super margin. Bowl. Yeah, yeah, most most of the Super Bowl usually comes by seven. One came or by three seven points, but most of them is three, four points. Um, but this one was twenty-two points, which is which is a really huge margin. Nobody expected that. The Bucks defense, oh my God, Todd Bowles, what a job that he did! The way he eliminated the deep pass, the side, um, he eliminated the sidelines pass. Um, he left. You know, I think I, I thought he left the middle of the field open for um, Patrick Mahomes. Well, not the middle of the field, but the 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 middle of the defense was open for much Patrick Mahomes to take advantage of. But I just don't think his offense was designed that way, and it didn't take advantage of that. I thought there was some pass underneath that he could have taken advantage of, but he was looking for the pass down the field and the pass on the sideline, and they just weren't there. Um, the Bucks took those away from him. <sighs> but, yeah, what a job by the Bucks defense. I mean, last week when we were talking about the Super Bowl, I was saying if the Bucs win, the Bucks, somebody on the Bucks defense was going to win MVP. That it didn't end up happening, but the whole Bucks defense could have won MVP if that was a thing. Um, that it was just a great game. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed seeing the only part about the game. I, I did think that there was a lot of um, flags in the first half, but that's gonna happen. But besides that, what a game by Brady! What a game by the Bucks defense! But what a game by Rob Gronkowski! Three guys that were on the, on the Patriots a couple years ago are the three guys that scored for the Bucks. What a shame mm -hmm. for the Patriots. Yeah, no, without a question, you know, definitely bring up some good points there. I thought um, certainly this was a dominating performance by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers from start to finish. They had complete control of this game uh, pretty much on both sides of the ball, on offense and defense. I uh, think you know, offensively, they did a really good job of running the football, getting their running game going. Uh, you know, Leonard Fournette, you know, had a good game, as you were just uh, saying, his stat line, uh, you know, ran for a touchdown, had 86 yards on the ground. I thought Donald Jones, Ronald Jones, excuse me, had some uh, solid runs as well. And I think uh, what had happened was that Tampa Bay just pretty much – ran it right down their throat and like we're just you know out, out physical and 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 the more tougher team and they just took it right to the Chiefs defense the Chiefs couldn't you know really stop the run and I think that opened up 
you know, the rest of the offense for, um, you know, for the Bucks open up the play action and then they're able to, you know, throw the ball and, you know, Tom Reed was able to make, you know, those short, you know, quick passes in precise passes that, you know, he likes to, you know, make, you know, that that's what he does through the short passing game. So he was able to get that going, uh, you know, off of the rest of the running game help with that. And I thought once, you know, that that happened, the Chiefs defense had no answer for what the Bucks offense was, you know, was running and throwing at them. Uh, so uh, and they looked soft, the, the Chiefs defense, absolutely like soft, like how oh, that, that, that was a terrible performance. The only good thing they did was stop them at the one yard line, uh, you know, and really that was, the, and they punted twice the first two drives. <laughs> but other than that, that was, you know, they couldn't stop the Bucks offense and, Quigan, they just moved. Well, they, they the ball did right that. The field. They did that. Did nothing with the ball, and the Bucks scored on their ass again. That's true. Exactly. Facts. They didn't couldn't even you know take advantage of uh, of that of stopping them you know at at the goal line and not letting them get in. So it really didn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. So definitely, this was a really good performance by Tom Brady. Very efficient. Um, you know, as he usually is. Uh, you know, and, and, and he just pretty much picked this defense apart and was vintage Tom Brady. You know, we, this is what he does and what we've seen for 21 years. So this, as you know, Tom Brady fans and, you know, people that have watched this guy play for 21 years, I mean, this is no surprise to us. Because this is what we're seeing in the last 20 years that he was a Patriot before he became a Buccaneer. So uh, de definitely this was as expected, but, you know, he got it done and executed um, as well as the rest of the offense. I thought defensively, um, you know, like Vlad said, this was an outstanding and phenomenal performance, one of the best uh, defensive performances I've seen in the Super Bowl. Um, I think the only one that would be better is the Patriots from a couple years ago when they held the Rams to three points and they had a um, – outstanding performance. It's the best the defensive side. Super Bowl I've ever seen. Exactly. No, On fact. both sides, man. Right, right, right. Because the Rams defense was pretty they, good. It was, uh, it was bad. bad. Oh, Seattle, yeah. Seattle against Denver was a good one as well. Yeah, yeah. But but the, they they, but that was they, the they killed, game, they killed no, right, the, right. the, you know, they killed the so Broncos. So this though. game? No, 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 no. We're talking about the 2018 Super Bowl with yeah, the Rams versus... Well, Barry mentioned, you know, that was a good performance defensively. I'm just saying. No, I'm saying like that game was one of the best defensive Super Bowls I've ever seen. Like, I know, I know what you're Seattle saying. Seattle and the Broncos, they had a good defense, but not in that game. No, I know what you're saying. I'm just saying Seattle against the Bronx the offense. The it, Broncos it, it offense. It should have been. That was a really oh, yeah. good performance by them. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Without question, Vlad, I'm definitely with you on that. Uh, that was an impressive performance as well, like the one that we saw from the Bucks on uh, Sunday. But yeah, man, they like legit uh, put out the blueprint and executed it perfectly on how you stop the Kansas City Chiefs offense. They doubled Tyreek Kill. Um, you know, they only rushed three or four. They didn't even pressure. Um, I think the they, Patriots they, they, had they, that they, blueprint. They didn't even blitz, but they put they got pressure on Mahomes. They had 29 pressures, which was a Super Bowl uh, record, record for most pressures. And, um, you know, exactly, in the, play, in the Super Bowl game. And they didn't really have the blitz, and they were playing man coverage on everybody else and were, you know, physical with, you know, everyone else, including Travis Kelsey. And they shadowed Tyree Kill, too. So I know they tried to put him in motion. Uh, you know, for yep. some of their formations, but everywhere he went, they always had at least one or two guys that were like right there, so he couldn't really, um, you know, get an advantage of uh, you know, if being in motion on any formation. So they pretty much just shut that down. The defensive line played great. Uh, the linebackers played great. Devin White, man, that that guy's a beast. Like I think he honestly. Um, you know, could have been the MVP and no one would have complained if they named Barrett, him MVP. Barrett. And, and Barrett, too. Barrett, Sh Shaq Barrett was, was Shaq the Barrett, man. Well, my goodness. That dude Yo. was a 
monster. He was all over the field, all over. And, and Domakong Su collapsing Dom everything. Dominican Drew, JPP, all those boys did their thing in ball. JPP out, right? was inside the line. He wasn't even on the outside. They 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 put yeah. him inside. Right, exactly. No, which was it's a little wrinkle right there. Right, right. So, and shout out to Todd Bulls for doing that. Well, like, they, but, they they put him outside on that on that first drive, and um, they had um, they had Kelsey and somebody else doubled him. Mm -hmm. And then they moved him inside where he did most of his destruction. Right, right. No, so certainly that's a good point. But I felt like they you know, definitely exposed the, you know, Kansas City, you know, Chiefs, you know, uh, offense and pretty much showed everybody exactly how you stop them. And uh, certainly Todd Bowles did a great job of putting that game plan together which was couldn't have been executed better by that defense and then another point i wanted to mention is that they were able to expose um the chiefs offensive line since like we said the two starting um so offensive starting. tackles you know were out and missed the game due to injuries and you know that was pretty um evident because you know those tackles couldn't have played any worse than they did on on sunday they you know, where I game beat on almost every play and, uh, you know, and, and the pocket was collapsing every time Mahomes dropped back, it seemed like. So, like, he was running for his life literally the whole game. Uh, and I saw a stat that said he ran for, like, almost five yards. 450 yards, man. Four, I think it was 497 yards. 95, 495. 495, right, right, right. No, the, you're right, John. The, Thank you on that. So yeah, just to avoid the you know you know the you know brushers that were coming at uh, you know at him all, all night. So they were all over him. I think he saw them in his in his nightmare. So I mean, <laughs> this was certainly uh, you know a, a great performance by the Bucks all around. Uh, you know they deserved to to win the Super Bowl and to be you know Super Bowl champs. Because uh, there was definitely the, you know, much better team, uh, you know, from the two on, on Sunday. And they certainly outplayed him in every way, shape, or form. So definitely shout out to the Tampa Bay Bucks on being the Super Bowl champions. Yeah, first of all, I'm, I'm $80 richer today. Um, nice, nice. Um, you know, that bet ended up working really well for you. Yeah, yes, what's up. it did. It did. Congrats. You know, um I mean, I took that bet, you know, solely because I don't – I really don't like the comparison between Mahomes and Brady and how they had, like, the baby goat and the – you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I, right, I don't right. like that at all. I'm like, right. maybe – Now, let me when, ask you this quick question. Was that the easiest $80 you've ever made? E ever. Ever. Hands down. I didn't have money. to do anything. I didn't have right, to do anything. Right. Seriously. Oh, they, they kept talking trash, you know, oh, Mahomes this, Mahomes that. I'm like – who was There's a guy. Some coworkers no, no, no. Friends, Actually, um, I have a discussion on Clubhouse. If you're on Clubhouse, um, you know you can follow me at Splizzy Fresh uh, every Wednesday. So I was having a discussion on, on Clubhouse, and a couple mm -hmm. guys down south came on, and you know they was talking big shit. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Big shit. You know, yeah, they oh, were really talking this Brady shit. this, Brady that, Patrick Mahomes. Yo, he's the best I've ever seen. I'm like, are you like, is this a joke? You know, like where have they um, been the last 20 years? Exactly. What have they been listen, watching the last 20 years? ESPN. They've been watching ESPN. You know, they <laughs> clearly that's all they clearly. watch, apparently. You know, I can um, see. I can tell. Yeah. So, you know, I took the bets. You know, I, I betted one guy 50 and then betted another guy. It was a friendly bet. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, One of them still owes me money. So if you're watching this, I want my money. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you, want to you know. Though. Yeah, so I, I put money on Brady, of course. Um, you know, I'm not a Buccaneers fan or anything like that, but, you know, I'm a Brady fan. So, hey, put money on Brady. You know I mean, you can't go wrong on Brady. You know what I'm saying? Even if you do go wrong, it's not going to be like by an egregious amount. You're never going to lose so much because, you know, Brady was terrible in the big game. It's always going to be by, like, maybe three points. Right, you know what I'm saying? Possession. You know, exactly. by, by one possession. So, um, I feel like it's the safest bet you can make. But yesterday's game, man, 
it was just a perfect game, you know, for Tampa Bay. Maybe not perfect because they didn't get that goal line rush, which I thought they should have given the ball to uh, Fournette instead of I like, agree. instead Absolutely. of um, Jones uh, there. Jones, like, what? Ronald Jones. Right, right. They had the wrong, you know, running back on the Right. Field. I'm like, why wouldn't you put him in there? The game, too. Exactly. Um, He's a better short yardage rusher. He's a stronger guy. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Right. <laughs> and I well, saw physical <laughs> running back. Exactly. <laughs> I saw an NFL player tweeted out, yo, if you have a running back that's bald by choice, you give him the rock to run at the goal line. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, wow, an NFL player said that? Yeah, an NFL player Holy said game. that. But um, the game. That's hilarious. You know, Buccaneers just controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. You know, on defense, we said it all postseason. If the defense keep playing like that and keep getting quarterbacks off their spot, there's nothing they can't do in the play in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? We've all been saying that the whole time. And again, you know, for the third straight, you know, game in a row, the defense, the defensive line has come out and Drew Brees looked uncomfortable. Aaron Rodgers looked really uncomfortable. Patrick Mahomes looked even more uncomfortable. You know what I'm three, saying? Three, like, three of the three, best quarterbacks that listen, the league has ever seen. Three yeah. MVP quarterbacks. All right. And three guys that you could say are first ballot Hall of Fame right now. That defensive line took all of them. You know, yeah. the the Chiefs offensive line looked like the Patriots offensive line in 2007 against the Giants. Because Patrick yeah, Mahomes, man, he was running for his life, man. You know, all and night long. All night. you can't even put all the blame on him because even if even though he was running for his life, he made some incredible throws that were not caught by his players, they did not help him at all. You know, there right. was drop they balls, two drop seriously. balls in the end zone. You know what right. I'm saying? Two drop balls touchdowns. in the end zone. Right, right. You know, that should have been touchdowns. What I, what I saw was um, I saw one team that adjusted and then one team that was good with what they were. You know what I'm saying? Because week 12, the Chiefs played the Buccaneers and they handled them, right? They went up big. And Tom Brady, you know, they started coming back with the play action. All right. So the Bucks didn't lose any other games after that. They went into the oh, bye. Well, not. neither team lost games after that. Right, right. But the Bucks but, themselves, they did not lose a game after they lost to, you know, the Kansas the City Chiefs. Chiefs. On week 12, and yeah. The game, if you're gonna play a playoff, it's a game of adjustments, right? And it mm -hmm. looked like Buccaneers made all the adjustments. They were on play action pass and 70% of the time on offense, you know? Um, and that that right there, they couldn't keep up with it. Their running game was working, which set up the play action. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to stop that. They added a few wrinkles. I saw a lot of the Patriots concept in there. You know, everything that Brady does to make him comfortable, they had it in there, which is what they're supposed to do. Um, exactly. The offense looked different from any other game they played. So another Patriot wrinkle there where they game plan just for this game on offense. They didn't do anything they was doing the last game. You know, they did use the play action, but they add wrinkles on everything. You know what I'm saying? The defense, mm -hmm. the defense was great on all on, on all three levels. Right? You got the line cornerbacks and say you got the line linebackers and, and the the backs. They all performed, you know, to the best of their abilities. Right. Um they were on cover two the whole game. And cover two the whole game. And if you're going to play crazy. cover they two the whole game. Coverage and they still all dominated. Game. Wow. Right. Wow. The, how you get out of cover two, right? You're supposed to run the ball. And the Chiefs did not run the ball. Okay? That's well, how you, like, alleviate a lot of they shit. Don't. The, they right. just, They started running the ball um, at the beginning of the third quarter. Mm -hmm. And they got away from that real fast because they were – I don't know why. They were down by so much, they just got away from that so fast. Right. But yeah, it's running the ball, and they just because when the Bucks played against the Saints, the Saints ran that defense against the Bucks, and mm -hmm. Tom Brady started some somebody started running the ball, and he started attacking the middle of the defense, the middle of the field, the, the the space in the defense where there was nobody. That's where he started attacking, just dumping it off to the running backs. And I feel as though Patrick Mahomes didn't want to do that. I don't know. His offense wasn't predicated to do that. 
Well, yeah, so they West played Kings cover too. Go for the big play. Right, that's what I'm saying. That but a big play but you, you have to adjust. Offense. You have they to played adjust. cover like, too. Absolutely. They did not blitz. You know what I'm saying? They only rushed four every time. And the, and that's all they had to do because they you, were they you, were collapsing the pocket the whole time. The four guys. If you go back last week, that's exactly what I said. You can't blitz Patrick Mahomes. You have to rush by with four. Mm-hmm. And, uh-huh. and that's exactly what I said. Um, du- double Tyreek Hill. Right. Yep. Their, exactly. their linebackers are fast enough to keep up with Travis Kelsey. Even though he did work, well, it was limited work. Yeah. work. It was li- it wasn't li- anything crazy big. Nah, yeah, I think he had I one. Anything. I think he had one catch that went for like forty yards or something like that. And that was like I remember that their, play, yeah. right. And that was it, pretty much. That was yeah. their best. That was their best play. You know, yep. um, in the fourth quarter, I don't know why the Chiefs were moving so slow. Did you guys notice that? Right. They, they had, had no, no sense, sense of urgency. urgency. Right. No. They didn't do no huddle. They didn't pick up the pace. Like, they have, right, right. I mean, they didn't have somebody as, as quarterback, so they didn't right. believe they could come. Listen, they Pat Mahomes, though. Pat Mahomes can run no huddle offense. We already yeah, talked saying, about this. You got, this. <laughs> we already talked about it. You got Tom Brady and Pat. We're taking Tom Brady. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. Of course, but I'm saying he's capable of running the no huddle offense, or at least running it with a quicker pace. They didn't. Like, they didn't. They, they didn't, but they should have. Brady would have made them. Brady would have made them run it. Listen, this is where it's beautiful. Well, Brady does, because if long things are not going to work, we're going short all game. We don't give a damn what happens. Yeah. Okay. We're going 14 play drives all game. All right. And um, fourth quarter, the Chiefs have the ball with 14 minutes left. They're moving like baby steps, baby steps. And then I'm like, dude, if you give the ball back to Brady and don't score, like he's ripping off like at least eight minutes. And he took the ball and took off seven and a half minutes. I'm like, Bro, that's yeah, a ball that's game. game. Game, right there. Okay. Game over. A lot of people were talking about the ref, the refs. Okay, first of all, the Chiefs got ninety-five yards in, in penalties, um, in the Super Bowl, which is very bad. I thought they got over a hundred. No, it was ninety-five it was, from what I saw. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, no, okay. I think it was um, more. I think it was more than a hundred. It was ninety-five in the first half. Right, first that's time, what it was. Right, 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 um, right. But over 100. Because the they, kept, they kept getting it, 95 yards in the first half. And some of those drives that were, like, cut short by their defense, Matthew, you know, um, what's his name? Teron Matthew. Teron Matthew. Yeah. Um, Breland, you know what I'm saying? They were just making bogus mistakes, tripping. You know what I'm saying? The one on, the one on um, Mike Evans was, was, you know, brutal. I thought you know that was a saying? bad call. I, I, don't no, I don't know. I don't know. He tripped him. Yeah, yeah, he like like the replay. A guy. The replay doesn't belly. look. The re, the replay doesn't yeah, look that he crazy. Did to affect that, that right. Pass, yeah. Though, to affect but that I mean, listen, when listen. you're going full time, when you're going full speed, I mean, like that does yeah. something. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I mean, plus they might have been a little acting in there too. What are you there, gonna do? There was Come a on. Little acting in okay. There. Um, I loved, <laughs> I loved Tom Brady's face when um. The defensive line got the you know um, unsportsman like conduct penalty. You know the the his lineman kind of like antagonized Chris Jones and Chris Jones oh, like yeah. pushed him back and dude was you know he threw the flag at Tom Brady's like <laughs> this dude got you you know what I'm saying like that <laughs> shit stuff like that's hilarious that was, to me. That was um, that was listen, awesome. I, I texted you guys after the whole Teron ter- Matthews and. Um, Oh, you yeah, know, seen that. Brady situation. I said, it's it's gonna be a bloodbath. Second oh, half yeah. is gonna be a bloodbath. Oh yeah, he's you gonna know? bury him, and, and that's um, exactly what he did. That's exactly what they did. And for the people that you know is talking about the refs, you know, officiating the game was rigged. Your people scored three field goals. <laughs> exactly nine. Points. Y'all scored three field goals. Okay, I can understand if the game was like so close and it was like you know. Um, it was decided by like a bad call, but y'all scored three field goals. I, you know, I saw a lot of people, you know, cause I was, I was talking to a few people while I was watching the game and they're like, yo, you know, suck up, please. Is that his name? The, the, the kicker? The kicker? They're yeah, like, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan suck, suck up, up. Yeah. please, please kick, please make this, keep us in the game. I'm like, if you're relying on your kicker to keep you in <laughs> games, bro. <laughs> you're in trouble. Listen, exactly. you're I took a sick. screenshot of my cash app and I sent it right to those two guys right then and there. I'm like, yeah, that's it. 
you guys just have my cash app already. But um, all in all, man, it was an all around. It was a clinic, man. You know, Tom Brady. He didn't have to do too much, but everything he did, twenty one for twenty nine, no interceptions. First time he scored in the first quarter in his career. Um, you know, like Vlad was saying, you know, the guys that Brady wanted to come there are the guys that scored all the points. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. GM Brady went in and, and did did his thing. You know what I'm saying? And, and you got to give him props and, you know, give the Buccaneers props for everything that they did, you know, um, listening yeah. to him, um, you know, doing what they had to do uh, to make sure that he was comfortable, you know? And, listen, you saw the effect. You saw the belief in those guys, you know, from – from the first playoff game they won. You know what I'm saying? Um, they had that confidence in their eyes. But I got some more questions for you guys, right? Uh, what does this loss mean to uh, Patrick Mahomes? You know, how should Patriots fans feel about after Brady won the Super Bowl? Um, and, and I'll ask you some more questions after that because I got, I got way more questions for y'all. So um, what, what's this loss mean? You know, real quick, what's this loss mean for Patrick Mahomes? And how should we feel as Patriots fans? I mean, he should feel as though his team wasn't ready. His coaches didn't put him in position to succeed. They didn't change the plan of the game in the second quarter, you know, trying to get some underneath stuff for him, trying to get some running game into it for him. It just was the, the team just wasn't ready. So I think it doesn't mean much to his career. I think he's so young. Um, it takes a lot to get here. Um, so he sh it, it's going to hurt. But I think at the end of the day, He's such a great quarterback that he's going to be back here. He's going to have chances. At, at least a couple more yeah. times, I'll say. Um, but, you know... He's well, a, we, we can't say he's going to be back here. I'm saying I think he's going to be back for a couple more times. Right, right. No, I'm saying we can't say he will be back. Hopefully he does because, you know... Yeah, but this in, thing's my, not in my opinion, in my opinion, I think he'll be back a couple more times. He's, he's just too good of a quarterback to not be back. Um, but I think, I think um, he just cannot afford to have what happened to him happen again. That's just you. You have to be more prepared than that. There has to be. Um, you have to have a second plan or plan B when you get into the game and the other team is neutral, neutralizing what you're doing. You have to have a plan B. Right. No, for sure. I think um, certainly he should be disappointed without you know question not only in what does it mean for him though uh, I mean I don't think it means that much well it means that he won't be the GOAT <laughs> that he won't surpass Tom Brady like let's That's just a good square that away and get that you know out there and clear the air on that make sure that we make out that as crystal clear to Everybody that's listening to Pro Fan Sports Podcast that Patrick Mahomes will never surpass Tom Brady and be the GOAT in the NFL to, for the rest of his career. Like, he's not going to get seven Super Bowl championships like Tom Brady just got on his seventh on Sunday. Like, that's just not going to happen. That's exactly what that means. So, just wanted to make that as clear as I possibly could to everybody because I'm tired of hearing of this talk of uh, Pat Mahomes already being, uh, you know, crowned the next Tom Brady. And that, Listen, he, he's you know, not and, the GOAT. And that he could possibly be greater. Like, he's not the GOAT he, or baby GOAT. Like, exactly. He's none of them shits. He, 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 that's facts, John. He, he's not that yet. He, well, he's, he's not that at all. Like, you know, he, there's... <laughs> We we saw the difference between the two on um, on Sunday. So don't get me wrong; he's a great quarterback. You know, one of the best talents that we've seen. Uh, you know, it, it play at that position in, in the NFL. But you know, he he's just not gonna get. I don't even think he'll get to six. He maybe get to four or five. But you know, even possibly, but they're definitely not six and five is even a reach. Who knows if he'll even get him, get over there. So I think I he'll think, get two. No, no, I think he'll get more than that. He'll, he'll get, but I, I, he's most likely to get like three, three or four, I, I, I'd say. But, um, but yeah, he'll, he'll get more than two. So I think, 
you know, he has I mean, like we said, his whole career left. He's only, what, 25? Uh, will be 26 um, next season. So, I mean, he's, you know what I'm saying, what, in his, like, fourth or fifth year? Well, fifth year because he sat out his first year, but fourth year playing um, coming up. So, he's got a lot of football um, left in the head of him. Um, so, I think we're definitely going to see, you know, more great things come from his way. This was just not one of his nights and one of his games, uh, to say the least. So I, I think that other than what I just said, I think he'll certainly be back. You know, he'll have, you know, some opportunities to be back here. We'll see if he um, takes advantage of those and, uh, you know, and gets back to this point because we all know how hard it is to get, you know, to these games because we saw – Tom Brady, he's won seven, but he went 10 years without winning the Super Bowl and lost two Super Bowls during that time. And But, you know, made it to the AFC Championship game like pretty much every year. So we know how difficult it is to win these games um, year in and year out. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how the rest of his career goes, but um, he certainly won't be passing the go uh, by any means. Yeah, I think two words. Um legacy damaging right because i think this game is about legacy right wow you think and, this um, damage his legacy john oh i mean when it, when it when it all when it's all said and done you know what i'm saying you can always go back and say yo you lost to a 43 year old tom brady you know what i'm saying um yeah, you know that's tom brady though how many people have been the goat only Listen, two people have been the GOAT in the Super Bowl, Eli Manning and Nick Foles. Right. So there's nothing, there's no shame of being the top and, three and, in the Super Bowl. And look look at what it's, what it's doing for Eli Manning's legacy. He's going to be a Hall of Famer that doesn't even deserve it. Legacy, you know what I'm saying? Because he beat him twice in the Super Bowl. I agree, John, right. He doesn't have the numbers to be in there, but because you beat Tom Brady, you're going to go. Tom yeah, Brady came in. in. He might he you're, be first back. Exactly. You're at the top of your game. You won MVP already, okay? You're, you're you know, the consensus. You won a game. Super Bowl MVP. You're the consensus, you know, number one quarterback in the league pretty much every year coming in. That's That damages your legacy. I'm not saying, like, he's not going to have a great career, but, like, you can always look back and say, you know, you lost to Tom Brady in, like, the AFC championships. You lost to them in the playoffs. You lost to them in the Super Bowl to him in the Super Bowl. So it's like, you, like you said, he'll never be the GOAT. You can never surpass that. And that has to do with your legacy. What are you leaving behind? You're not <laughs> leaving the greatest, you know what I'm saying? And now, I mean, Tom Brady is the greatest of all time, I think even above Michael Jordan, you know, in my opinion. You no, know what I'm, I'm saying? Because, listen, NBA Finals take seven games to determine. NFL, you'd have one game, one, one game. shot. To do yeah. it, you know what I'm saying, and your team has to be successful. Your whole the, team. The odds, the odds are uh, a lot um, against you in the NFL as well, because it's a 53 man roster. 53 man roster. So many, so many injuries. Have, injuries. So many things have to go right for you to get there. So performance for, for him to make it to 10 Super Bowl, win seven, 70 percent, um, winning. Um, Percentage, percentage it, yeah, not too, make it to the Super Bowl forty-seven percent of the time. That's like that's remarkable, bro. remarkable. Now we're talking about you know things that kind of you know kind of like rivaling LeBron James and what he's done with you know going into the finals anyway. You well, know, he's um, to me. Of course, yeah, of course, boy, absolutely. He's passed he Michael passed Jordan. Him, right, right. You know what I'm saying, like. If, <laughs> I saw Robert Ori actually tweeting him, you know, welcome to the Seven Chip Club. I'm like, man, shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> no. Robert Ori really said that. Wow. That's no, that was, that was that was really good, man. Um, you know, and and the second, I don't know if you guys actually answered the second question. How should the how should the Patriots fans feel? You know, now that Brady won the Super Bowl, I think they should be angered by Bill Belichick. Look at. This guy has this ability. He has, he's still good that way. He still won another Super Bowl, and we let him go. Why? Why did we let him, this guy walk away? Why didn't we keep it for, for ourselves? He was with us for 20 years. It would have been a beautiful story if he retired with us. And now he's writing another story with somebody else. 
when he's gonna all, retire with us. When when all we had to do was give him a, a contract. Come on now, that's you, as a Patriots fan. I feel I feel chipped. I feel like Belichick didn't do his best um, for the team. He he left us high and dry. Yeah, no, I'm certainly with you on that, um, Vlad. I feel, you know, as a Patriots fan, you know, I'm happy with Tom Brady. Be- before question. you start, Barry, but uh, also as a Patriots fan, I'm excited for Tom Brady. I'm so proud of him. Unbelievable. He showed you that throughout the 20 years that he dedicated to us, what he was in those 20 years, that's exactly who he is. He's a winner after all. Without question, but and definitely the best winner that's ever played professional sports, in in my opinion. I mean, all the guy does is win, 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 no matter what, like DJ Khaled says. So, um, you know, that 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 definitely, you know, he's you know the best to ever do it. Uh, but as far as how Patriots feel should be about it, they should be pissed off. I, I Bill Belichick. And Vlad, I know you were saying that, oh, why did they, you know, let him go? And, you know, when they clearly shouldn't, it was because of ego and arrogance. He, you know, they let, he, Bill Belichick let his ego and arrogance get in the way, let his feelings get, you know, get in the way, um, you know, and didn't put his emotions aside and, you know, did, did, didn't thought that this man was finished. He bet against the GOAT and against Tom Brady, and that's something that you never do. So people should, you know what I'm saying, be right, be upset and be furious at, you know, at Bill Belichick. And I've been, and I'm still pissed off at him too, and it's going to take me a while to get over that unless he was able to rebuild this thing and get the Patriots back to being a winning uh, team, which may take a little while, but um you know, it's certainly, you know, extremely hard to get over how you don't even, like, make an effort to bring this guy back. And then the first year he goes to another team and wins the Super Bowl when he wanted to stay all along and all you had to do was give him a reasonable contract, get reasonable, like, you know, two-year deal or something, not even top market value, like the middle of the market, like he's been making his whole career. And he would have been more than happy, you know, with that and would have stayed here and retired a Patriot. And who knows, maybe won another Super Bowl or two, you know what I'm saying, uh, depending on how, uh, you know, in, on how, you know, things would have gone. But they would have at least had a much better chance to compete. Uh, you think, you think, the championships. Um, you think Brady would come to practices if they gave him a contract? Yes, he would. Well, they, they come to OTAs. Yeah, yeah. You think he would start uh, coming back probably, to OTAs since if they were giving if, if they give him when they traded when they traded Jimmy Garoppolo in 20, 2017, 2017, 2018, whenever that was when they traded Jimmy Garoppolo, if they gave Brady a five year contract, he would have been a dedicated patriot professional as he always was. I mean, he did stop coming to OTAs for a few years, and because because they weren't treat, they were treating him like shit. Like he won he won two Super Bowl, and they were treating him like. I, but the question like, was, do you think he would like show he up to OTAs? I'm saying yes. If they gave, if they him, gave, that gave contract. him the five year contract, yes, he would have he would have came to OTAs. Or if they gave him a contract that yeah, he would have been happy with, didn't necessarily yeah. have to be five years, but something that you know he would have been okay with. Then yeah, so certainly. Um, you know, he would have been at OTAs and working with those younger receivers like, you know, Be- Belichick wanted him to. But like one Brad year, said, the reason why he didn't do that was because he wasn't happy and he was, you know, pissed off and felt, one, you know, disrespected and unappreciated. So he was like, you know what, I'm not even going to be there for the, you know, OTAs because those are voluntary practices. Those one of those years. Practices. One of those years, Belichick made him earn his, his incentives. Like, Bel- I think he was making 15 million, and then Belichick added a 5 million incentive or something to like that. Like, 20, yeah. I like, it was like you were, you were treating him like a rookie or something, like somebody that hasn't won you 
five Super Bowls. Like, come on, bro. Right, right. You just treat him like any other like player, and like like he's just another quarterback. You know what I'm saying? On on you know on, on the team or in the league, which he's clearly not. Um, as you know, he's we've seen in the last twenty years. Some Brady. Right, exactly. Like, put some respect on his name. Uh, you know, Belichick. So definitely, he should be ashamed of himself that he let this happen, and you know, let it get to this point where he couldn't figure out how to keep Tom Brady and, uh, you know, and, and, and thought he was washed up and done and couldn't play it, a, a, anymore. And, and and so I think we Patriots fans should, you know, d- d- definitely not be too happy with Bel- Belichick at all. And now the pressure is on him to see what he can do this offseason. And he has to – make some big, big moves uh, for, for sure. So right. that's what it is. Uh, so the question was, how should fa- Patriots fans feel about Brady winning? Um, so the Super Bowl on Sunday was actually the second most watched Super Bowl um, in the New England area after the 2014 Super Bowl. So, I mean, if I'm think- I mean, I guess they should be happy because – Y'all saw Brady win. You know what I'm saying? Everybody should be happy today. Right? For Brady, yes. Yeah, right. Everybody should be rejoicing and, you know, have party it up. You know what I'm saying? So, Right, but um, not everybody supporting Tom Brady. That's a Patriots fan. People feel indifferent about this, John. Some people were rooting for the guy, you know, like myself and, you know, the three of us and, you know, and some people – uh, you know, from Pats Nation and then there were other people from Pats Nation that weren't rooting for the guy and that didn't want to see him win a rig with another team and get his seventh, uh, you know, Super Bowl victory. So I think it, it's definitely feel like it's split and divided as far as who wanted to see him win and who didn't and want I think, to see him win. And I think that's fine too, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think we're all fans and we all have our feelings towards our team and, you know, what, what the team is doing. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, I'm in a different position than you guys when it comes to the Patriots and the decisions they've made, you know what I'm saying, Bill Belichick, because to me, like, he's the greatest coach of all time, you know what I'm saying? And um, I feel like there's things that go on in relationships that we don't know about and, you know, shit goes awry and there's really – I don't know what you can do about that. You know, um, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm in, I'm in these meetings, knowing what's happening, what, knowing what's happening behind the scenes with Tom Brady and his mindset and whatever. Um, but I feel like, to me, I've been separating, you know, the Bill Belichick thing with Brady um, from the Buccaneers thing with Brady. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like it's like a whole different team, you know, in a way better position to do what they did exactly last night than our team was. You know what I'm saying? So, um, to me, like, I'm – shoot, Brady's the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's always been the GOAT since – shoot, since he won four rings. To me, I've been saying he's a GOAT. There's nobody else that's that's compared. And – um, right, right. But at the same time, I recognize, like, Brady might have not been here forever, you know. And I, 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 I've been preparing myself for this, you know, because you hear the rumors – you know what I mean? So to me, my mindset has been like, yo, like, if Brady's going to go, like, there's nothing we can do about that. You know, I mean, me as a fan anyway, there's nothing I can do about it. You know, Belichick's running this shit. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like, I'm a, I'm a Patriots fan, so um, my loyalty's there. You know, I don't know. Like, I don't feel, I don't feel mad at the team because I feel like now it's an exciting time. Like, we get to see what this team's going to be. You know what I mean? I feel like we've won for 20 years, and a lot of us have been yeah, we, spoiled. We've we, never seen. We could have kept winning. Exactly. We could have Re- kept this right. going. We could have right. we could have we could have been in this situation when Brady decided to retire. Let Brady right. retire and then we can be in this situation. We could have kept winning, but I don't I don't know if a Super Bowl was guaranteed, but I know we would have yeah, been guaranteed if, going into the playoffs. Um it wasn't but, a guaranteed no. Super Bowl, but it wouldn't have been the Bucks either. If Brady didn't go to the Bucks, he was with us. We would have had a chance. 
It would. It definitely wouldn't have been the Bucks because we saw what James was doing with that exactly. team. Exactly. You know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, I don't know if if Antonio Brown, Rob Gronkowski, Leonard signs with the Bucks if Brady's not there. Exactly. You know what I'm Who saying? Knows? They might be and, here. If if Tom Brady was here, they might have that's, came over. That's here. an argument to be had because Antonio Brown couldn't come back here. And then well, Rob Van Kamp. But Gronk and Leonard Fournette. Gronk, Gronk so retired. Gronk but retired. Gronk would have unretired if Tom Brady stayed. Who knows? Do you if think Tom Gronk would have unretired to come play for the Patriots? Yeah, that if I don't. Tom Brady I don't did. no way, if dude. That I don't think so. No. Yeah. Tom Brady was here the year before that, bro. I Tom Brady. I He's, disagree. I disagree with you on that, Barry. Because needed a year off. listen, I disagree with you. Gronk needed a year, year off from football. Let's not listen. talk over each other. Right, right, right. Thank you, Vlad. I don't know. Gronk took a year off, and I don't think he was talking about anything about coming back, man. Yeah, so, um, Gronk took the year not not just a year off. He actually wanted to get away from Belichick. He he said I don't he think he comes back here. He said it wasn't fun playing for Belichick anymore. He wasn't having fun. He was. He he cried in, on TV about like how football Painful. wasn't fun anymore. But yeah, so I don't think he was gonna come back at all. But I do think um, the other guys could have came to the Patriots maybe if um, like Antonio Brown. Was here. Um, I don't know if because I don't know if Kraft would have hired Antonio Brown again, but maybe Leonard Fournette or something. I don't know, man. I think but I think some I don't guys care about, started. I don't care about that. I just right, care about right. the fact that. Belichick could have kept Brady. We, we could have kept having the best quarterback of all time on our team, and we didn't make that happen. Right, and that's where I'm at. He could have kept them, but he didn't. So, like, now what do I do as a fan? Do I, you know, as cry fan, about Brady no, not I, being no, I, here? How long do I do that? You I know what I mean? Because we just played uh, a whole you, season. <laughs> until you fix it. Until you fix it. Because exactly, <laughs> you haven't fixed anything. Okay, so now... No, nah, we got to. Because you made, you made a decision without a plan. It's like, it's like I'm going to throw away the TV, but we come home and I'm like, yeah, um, we can all watch TV on this computer or something. On this, not even this computer. This, <laughs> on this, this phone. This iPhone 4. <laughs> like, what? Like, what? That's what, that's what came you in was this year. I think, I think you guys have <laughs> lots of, lots it's of valid points. Oh, y'all, man. y'all have lots of valid points and I think, you know the way y'all feel is is a deser- y'all deserve to feel the way y'all feel. You know what I'm saying? I just think I, I'm I'm on a different spectrum, and I don't know. I'm I'm looking forward to what we have to do. You know, and I think that that brings us to to the next questions, right? Um, right. So, how do you think Bel- Belichick feels about Brady winning the Super Bowl one year after um, him walk away? And then, what happens this off season? Does does he is does he have to be aggressive? Well, I think Belichick, with his arrogance, I don't think he feels any way that Brady won the Super Bowl. I think he's just like, wait, well, whatever. I'm um, surprised you said that because that's where a, I'm at. He's an arrogant <laughs> guy. He's an arrogant guy. So I'm pretty sure he's just like, well, you know, um, he's old. I was going to keep an old quarterback. You know what I mean? I, I'm pretty sure Belichick doesn't care. But at the end of the day, he should feel hurt. He should feel as though he fucked up that he let the best quarterback go. Um, as far as being aggressive, I don't think I don't I don't I don't react. I'm, I'm not a reactive kind of guy. I'm a if I have a plan, I'm gonna follow my plan. So I'm not just gonna be aggressive just to be just to be just to just to to have a have revenge. I'm not a, a revengeful is not the way I um, operate. So I do think I do think he has to put a good roster together. And he has to be, he has to have a winning season because we are the New England Patriots. Why we 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 don't accept mediocrity? So we should have a good roster. He should be. I'm not saying he should be aggressive. I, I, he should be. He should just do a good job in the off season and in the draft, putting a team together as he as he should all, have always been doing. I'm not gonna say he he needs to be more aggressive this year. I just think he needs to do the right thing. Get a good quarterback up in here, get some good offensive players, um, you know, rebuild the defense, you know, get us back into contention. I'm not saying we're gonna I mean, at least in the playoff, let's let's at least be a, f- a fifth or sixth or seventh seed. Um, it's just yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I think he should definitely feel some kind of way about, you know, TV 12 going and, you know, should definitely feel more pressure about, you know, going into this, you know, off season, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, you, you let this guy go in the first year he goes, he ends up, you know, winning the Super Bowl championship with a, you know, with another team that he moved on to, the Tampa Bay Bucks. So I think, you know, certainly he should, you know, be feeling some heat uh, and feel like he needs to be on his shit this, uh, you know, off season because that's certainly what, uh, you know, what, what the case is and, and what the situation is. Uh, I'm sure he's probably not really going to care, but, I mean, he should care because, like we've said numerous times on the show, this is a critical and one of the most important off seasons for Bill Belichick, the GM, uh, that he's had in his career. He cannot fuck up this off season and afford to have another bad off season uh, like he's had the last couple of years, and not to have put the Patriots in this position that they're in. So, uh, yeah, no, he certainly has to be more aggressive. I don't want to see him just uh, do what he does normally, let teams make their moves on the first um, days of free agency, pick up all the top free agents, and then pick up the scraps in the left. And afford it. Uh, you know, afterwards when all the top guys are gone and already signed on other teams, I want to see him active and aggressive and, uh, you know, for right right from the go. He, he should, he, as soon as free agency starts March, 17th, uh, or when even when the tampering uh, period begins, I think a couple of days before that, you know, they, you know, the tampering period begins. I want to see, you know, rumors buzzing that the Patriots are being active and going after these, you know, top free agents and bringing in, uh, you know, the talent that they need to, um, you know, on this roster. Because, and I've been hearing from my sources that. Um, <laughs> Very sources. Brady, yeah, yeah, I got sources that if Brady won this Super Bowl, <laughs> which he did, that um, that Belichick was even going to be more aggressive, and Kraft was even going to push him <laughs> to be more aggressive. He just dropped a B season. money bomb, a B money bomb. You know, like B the Woj bomb. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that B money bomb. Yes, sir. A yes, B bomb. <laughs> <laughs> A BB, that's right. right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I like that. There you go, John. So, that that should be a BB. And then we should have a, like, sound of a bomb, like, go boom. Yeah. Uh, anytime <laughs> I drop a Every bomb time you drop one, drop an yeah. acoustic bomb. Yes, yes. That, that would be awesome. We definitely need to work on that sound effect. And we'll have that soon for y'all. So, stay tuned. But, yeah, just wanted to finish up saying that um, he, you know, certainly has to do a good job as a GM, yeah, not only for agency, but in the draft. He can't afford to have another poor draft like, you know, he's had, uh, you know, the last couple of years that have really set him back and, you know, to where, to where he's pretty much starting from scratch and doesn't have anything to, you know, to build around. Because uh, I get that they're having a couple – the veterans, you know, come back of, from, you know, opting out, but we don't know how they're going to look like because they're a year older and they're getting up there in age. So we don't really know, uh, you know, how they're going to play when they when they get back. So he certainly has to, you know, be, be, you know, have a great off season and be one of the top teams that um, are making the most moves and, and and I want to see some big time moves, some splashes uh, th this off season. Um, but by him, I think that's what he has to do, and he has no choice. Yeah, uh, I mean, for me, what Bill Belichick should feel is some sense of regret, you know, for letting Brady go. You know what I'm saying? I understand, like in relationships, there are things that happen, you know. But you're in a marriage and it's till death do us part. You should have did more. You know what I'm saying? From on that front, I completely agree. 
you know, on another front, if somebody chooses to leave, then that's on them too. You know, um, I think he should feel some regret. But like Vlad was saying, I think this dude's so arrogant, his e ego so big, he's not going to let himself feel those that way. You know what I'm saying? I think for him, he's just like, huh, on to next year. You know what I'm saying? Well, on to um, 2021, yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of excited for Bill, you know, because I feel like this is – this is – He's in a position where now, B Belichick, you're going to have to prove yourself again, right, for people. Because the guy – He wasn't in a position to prove himself this year. This year, but I feel like there was a lot of circumstances this year you could say, like, yo, there's so much that went against them, like, like you what? know, uh, COVID, you know, all the yeah. opt-outs we'll and, and the free, right, and the free right. agents that left, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think I – I think those, 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 those are things you could say logically, you know what I mean, that plagued the team. You know, um, but like moving on now, it's like, bro, Brady just one upped you, bro. Now the pressure's on, like Barry was saying. You know, yeah. and I'm I'm pretty excited to see because like we know Belichick is a master motivator, and when he's the underdog, we know what he does. You know what I'm saying? So I think now that he's gonna have a full off season to do what he does. I don't know how aggressive he'll be, but I think he'll be methodical, as usual. You know, I think... I don't want to see that, though. Right. Methodical. I mean, he's been methodical for this whole time, you but know, coaching coaching the Patriots. I know that. I know that. <laughs> um, but, like you said, your sources have said that they will be aggressive, right? And Correct. I think you have to be methodically aggressive, you know, because you can't start signing everybody because... We've seen that before, and that doesn't always work. You got to bring in the right pieces methodically, you know, to put this thing back together, you know, and there's some guys that are going to come back from opting out, you know, so we know the team's going to be a little better already on paper starting next year. Now it's who are you going to give the, the key to the engine, right? That That's the main thing. Like, mm -hmm. you need some, something serviceable, whether it's the draft, whether – Whatever. I think definitely the draft, you need to address, you know, your quarterback position, period. Um, but we know Belichick, what we want him to do is usually what he doesn't do. So um, I'm definitely curious to see what he does. Um, yeah, but he's got to draft a guy this year. You can't go two you have years to. in a row without not drafting Listen, a quarterback. Right. I say you should even, like, try to move up to get a guy, man. You know, I'd be happy um, with that. I'd don't even see that. Don't even risk, you know, not getting one um, at, at 15. Just do – make a move, man. You have to make a move. And like you said, you have to be aggressive in some ways. But like Vlad says, I don't think you, you should go outside of yourself because that's where you start fucking up. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you no, start trying fair. to do – That's a fair point. When you start trying to do too much, that's when you start fucking up. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think – I mean, I don't think we can think of any other coach that would come in and, and turn this thing around. You know what I mean? Like, in one year. So, um, if anybody's going to do it, it's going to have to be Belichick. You know, with that resume, what you've been doing, like, hey, you're up, man. You know, Brady went up, hit it out the park. It's your year, my boy. You know what I'm saying? You notice nobody upped it out on the Buccaneers. Because they, they have Tom Brady. Because they have Tom Brady. If so we like, have Tom Brady, you need to have so many to opt out? I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't right, think right. so. They not as you. Out on the Actually, they that's a good question, right? Ring. Not as that's many. That's a question. Do you guys think because Tom Brady left, those guys decided to opt out just because of that? Yeah, we're not going to win anything this year. I'm going to opt <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. So, no, that so, was definitely a factor. That was, that that was definitely a factor. factor. Absolutely. Bel Belichick got the double whammy on that one. Um, right. That brings me to my next my next questions, right? Um, is this the biggest accomplishment in, in Brady's career? And what does a seventh Super Bowl mean for Brady? Well, you know, uh, to say it's the biggest accomplishment in his career is really hard to say. Because um, the guy won against, you know, he's – his second year in the year, second year in the league, he won against the greater Sean Turf. Um, in 2014, yeah. he won his fourth Super Bowl to equal Joe Montana. And he's just been amazing. But I do, I have to say, the road to this Super Bowl, what he did this year, new team, COVID, 
um, new teammates, uh-huh. new area, new um, conference, a tougher conference, mm-hmm. tougher division. Um, he's faced the second best defense in the league, which was the um, the, the no the the. The Washington team that was a really good defense. Washington football team. Yeah. He he faced Drew Brees. He faced Aaron Rodgers. He faced the new Patrick face of the, the the new face of the league, Patrick Mahomes, and he beat all of them. I I think that's a great, amazing, just unbelievable run. Um, it's right up there with some of his best run. Um, so I'm not gonna say it's the greatest, but it's up there, man. It's it's really up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, did you ask, did you ask one more question, John? Yeah, yeah. What does this mean for a seven Super Bowl mean for Brady? Um. Well, it's seven on top of Michael. Uh huh. Just it puts you on on a different echelon. This dude doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame. They they just <laughs> they need dude, another class. <laughs> yeah, this dude. This is this is Brady. Hall of Fame, everybody else. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, this dude, man. I mean, I think for him, there should be, like, the Super Bowl MVP should be named after him. And I think he should – he doesn't have to he, – he, he doesn't have to – he shouldn't have to wait five years to get into the Hall of Fame. Listen, he the first week after he retires, put him in there. Yeah, yeah pretty just, much. Get, exactly, get him right in there. Exactly. That same right week. Right, I think there should be right a couple. Gate, yeah. I think because of his seven Super Bowl, there should be a couple of awards, including the MVP of the Super Bowl, named after him. There should be a quarterback award named after him. No, absolutely, yeah, sure. I agree with that. Because I feel like Definitely. the quarterback award has been taken over by like the MVP, which I feel like is not is not fair to a lot to a lot of players. That's true. No, that's a good point. Like a, like a Derrick Henry dude, I'm like yo, things that guy's doing. Yeah. Right, right. It's true. If, you know, if his team doesn't team have him, him, it's it's a problem. Exactly. Right. Right. No, be sure it's not fair to the rest of the you know guys who don't play a quarterback. Uh, but you know, getting to your question, John, I certainly think if whether this is his greatest accomplishment or not, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say it's the greatest accomplishment, but I think this was the toughest, like, led to the toughest road and the toughest path to the Super Bowl that he's, you know, certainly has. This is the best, you know, competition that he's had to play in order to, you know, win a Super Bowl. Um, I think an argument can be made that, you know, the Super Bowl, that was his greatest accomplishment. Uh, could either be either the Seattle Super Bowl, because, you know, after 10 years of not winning a Super Bowl, finally getting over the hump and, you know, and and, and winning one after a 10-year drought um, and getting there a couple of times and coming up short. I think that certainly uh, is one of the top, if not the, um, you know, greatest accomplishment. And then the Atlanta Super Bowl has to be there as well with, you know, the 28-3 to comeback and, uh, winning that in overtime. So I think those two would certainly be his greatest, you know, accomplishments in his career and what, you know, in the greatest Super Bowls that he's won. But, you know, this is certainly right up there with them. I'd probably put this one at, at third just, you know, because of the, you know, circumstances he had to go through this year. And, um, you know, and then also, the you know, the teams that he's had to face. So, um, in order to get there. So this was certainly an impressive, um, you know, playoff run that they had and uh, an super impressive Super Bowl that they played and uh, won, um, you know, and impressed with the way he played and especially uh, throughout the whole postseason. So, you know, throwing the most um, touchdown passes uh, and, you know, in the Bucks uh, postseason history. Uh, so I think he's definitely had some great ones. The great, but this is one of them. But this is the the greatest uh, accomplishment. And then a seventh ring for him, like he's, it just means he's you know the hit of the the greatest uh, player or not greatest player, but just the greatest um, you know winner of 
you know, in, in all, all, all of sports, he's in his own um, world, kind of like Black Bunny's own pedal stool. Like, you can't compare anybody with them. Like, that conversation and debate um, as far as, like, you know, whether he's the GOAT, even, like, with Jordan and any of those other all-time greats, he kind of just put that to rest and put that to an end uh, with the seventh Super Bowl. Like, you can't compare anybody to him. So I think right. that's just what it is. For me, I think um, I think Super Bowl, the, the fifth Super Bowl that he won was uh, his greatest all time. You know, um, the comeback, um, surpassing um, Montana. I think that was it that, like, listen, if this guy wins any more, it's just icing on the cake. And subsequently, he won two more on top of that. You know what I'm saying? I think right. mm -hmm. that was um, – the biggest accomplishment of his career. Uh, but I certainly do think, like, this one is up there, too. It's a close second or third um, because this is the first time Tom Brady played in the playoffs in the, in the wild card and made it all the way through and won. Yep. You know, this is the first Super Bowl that's been won at home. That's huge. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? This is the first Super Bowl he didn't throw a, 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 an interception. There was no, no mistakes on his part. So I think it's definitely up there. I think give me, give me, um, you know, the Falcons, give me the Seahawks, and then give me this one. I mean, as far as, like, the top Super Bowls that he's played, and um, as far as, like, what this means, it just means the bait is over. Absolutely. The bait is, case, like, the bait so is over. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I said this before, you know, on another episode, ESPN, stop with the bullshit polls. Don't talk to me about le two minutes left in the game. None of that shit. It's it's over. You know, um, there's just – there's no argument you can make. You know, I was um, <laughs> watching Vlad TV and Marcellus Wiley was like, yeah, but Peyton Manning's the GOAT. It's like the guy watched the GOAT play last night as he was getting inducted by, in the Hall of Fame, okay? <laughs> and he used to have battles with that guy. Please tell me. For real. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I had my it's biggest – Peyton Manning had the biggest games of his life against Tom Brady, retired long enough to make it into the Hall of Fame, and the one year he's going to make it, he has to go to a Super Bowl with the guy that pretty much made his career with him. It's like, don't talk to me about any of these guys. You know, Montana, I know he, like, passive-aggressively still says that he's the best. It's like, no, you are man. Like the guy has bro. records. I think, I think he's admitted it now after after the sixth Super Bowl. I think he's he did. Yeah, I he, think he's been he's admitted. I thought that he never did. That. He like kind of like you know jumped around it. Like I I, I won four no losses and t that type of stuff. But it's like Montana man, you're still a, you're still a goat, but you're not the goat. You know what I'm saying? It's just step aside, man. You know, um, if he listens to this. Uh, podcast, which I know he doesn't. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> you don't know that. Maybe exactly. You never know, John. Maybe, so maybe he's just him. browsing. Maybe he's browsing at two a.m. on YouTube, and he's like, "Oh, who's these three idiots? <laughs> who, is, who are these dumbasses?" You know, <laughs> trying to talk sports. You know, but oh man, you know what? Um, I thought that was a great discussion on on, on the Super Bowl. Uh, I thought. You know, even though my team wasn't in it, that was an enjoyable Super Bowl. Um, you know, I li I usually like the Super Bowls to be a little closer than that. You know, I like the games to be a little more competitive. But I wasn't mad that they, they shut the Chiefs up. It's like, please, just shut up. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, you got to earn it. You got to earn it. You know, so right, let's The Chiefs to needed that, for sure. They needed a slice of humble pie and to be humbled like they – they weren't a nice, uh, you know. They did. Living. They needed that humble pie for real. Uh, absolutely. Um. So some some NFL news. Uh, Philadelphia is asking for a trade for Carson Wentz. So they want to trade. He's on a trading block, and they're asking for like a similar package as uh, Matthew Stafford got, what? which is a two. I know <laughs> he's not gonna get it. You know that, Barry. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the hell? Which is a two first rounder, um, at least. Which you know. I think they're gonna whoever, get. It. Whoever nah, pays for nah, that, nah. whoever Carson pays Wentz that, right? That. No, they're, 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 whatever team does that. Is, Listen, yeah, look, out, cool. look out for the Colts and the Bears, okay? 
Don't you know my sources are telling me? Oh, <laughs> uh, so you got sources too? You know, I mean, have. it's only okay. right. It's only right to have right. sources. Um, right, so the Bears right. and the Colts. Um, but I can say whoever pays that much for him, their job is on the line for the rest of that year. Okay, so be right. careful um, with doing this. You know what I'm saying? Um, and um, a bigger news that came through was um, Andy Reid's son, Britt Reid. Um, he was involved in a car crash on Thursday, February 4th, um, with a car carrying a four and a five-year-old. The five-year-old was left with life-threatening injuries um, in 2007, which is like, this is the second time Britt Reed has gotten in trouble for similar situations. In 2007, Britt Reed was arrested and pleaded guilty to driving under the influence. And I believe he he actually said that he was under the influence in a, in a warrant or something like that, um, this time around again. And, um, you know, that, that's tragic. I don't know why this dude was allowed to coach in the league, but this is another instance where the the league needs to, like, watch these things and, like, you have to put your foot down, man. Yeah, you know I mean, like, if you're, if you're here trying to protect your brand, protect the shield, like, these are things you cannot allow to happen. Like, how is this guy coaching at the top level with, with a record? You feel me? Not saying – you know, people with a record shouldn't be, like, trusted with things. But, like, something like that where you're getting DUIs, you know, I think something should, like, disqualify you from doing things. Well, he's the, right. He's, no, I agree. His dad is the boss. Right. So. His, his dad is the boss, and his dad has a boss as well. We'd be like, Andy, we can't have that. You know, there, there's there's plenty of other coaches you know, and I think, you know, for him, he's doing a good thing because it's like, yo, let me give my son a chance. You know what I mean? Like, help him make a living. You know what I mean? Like, if any dad would do that. But at the same time, it's um, it's a tragic thing, and I hope um, those kids end up all right because, you know, and I hope he ends up getting something because last time he got a slap on the wrist, and this time he went and did something like that again a week, what, like during the week of the Super Bowl. Well, I know my, I, that, that that's crazy. My prayers are for that small child. Um, she has life-threatening injuries, and yeah, um, up to today they were saying she was in um in not in good condition. So my prayers are up for her. Yeah, man, for yeah, sure. Yeah, mine as well, for, for for sure. I know I feel bad for whoever they are, that man. child and in, in, in that family, and you know I hope they're able to you know, get through this extremely tough time and hope, you know, she gets better. Even though I know the circumstances are tough, but, you know, hopefully uh, she'll be able to, you know, get past this and get well soon. That's and, yeah, fact, and man. I agree with you, John, 100%. The league has to take these things way more seriously and uh, not just, you know, overlook them and not really, you know, do anything about them. Like, Greg, they have to take more action and be, you know, more disciplined and proactive yeah right well, when it comes to you know incidents like this to happen you know with coaches or uh people that work in the league because they represent them so this looks bad on the league if they're letting guys just you know get away with it and you know without you know punishing them and giving them some uh you know kind of disciplinary uh you know action to, towards you know, what they had just, um, you know, done. So, you know, I mean, you've got to suffer the consequences when you do things like that. And it's unfortunate that that hasn't happened. But so hopefully the league, you know, changes that moving forward because they're going to need to. Right. Again, you know, not saying guys shouldn't get a second chance because, you know, people make mistakes, but there are certain mistakes that like you shouldn't be able to be at certain positions. Um, you know, I know the players get in trouble all the time, you know, um, but at the end of the day, they're, they're young men and they're going to make stupid decisions and they do, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But there are certain things, like you said, when you're representing the league in certain ways, you shouldn't be able to do certain things. Um, on to some NFL honors and, and the Hall of Fame class. So NFL honors was this week as well. So the Art Rooney Sportsmanship Award um, was given to Teddy Bridgewater. So shout outs to him. The assistant coach of the year, uh, uh, offensive coordinator from the Bills, Brian Dabble, Dable, Brian Dable, yeah, Brian Dable, um, coach of the year. I think he used to coach for the Patriots. Yeah, he did. Um, and I don't know why this guy didn't get a head coaching job over that that Nick Burley 
Hurley character um, for the Eagles. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, not I the Eagles. Who? No, no, for the Texans. For the Texans. Um, coach of the year, uh, I think deservedly so as well. Kevin Stefanski is the Cleveland's head coach. Uh, he did a good job this year. Offensive yeah, player of the well year, deserved. uh, deservedly as well. Derrick Henry, defensive player of the year. Uh, I thought there was some debates around that. Aaron Donald, um, offensive rookie of the year, Justin Herbert, comeback player of the year, which everybody knew was going to happen, was Alex Smith. Uh, the Walter Payton man of the year was uh, awarded to Russell Wilson and the MVP to Aaron Rodgers. So shout out to all those guys for getting their awards. And, um, you know, shout out to everybody that, you know, that was in the running and was nominated for these things, you know, because these things are big. All right, so on to the Hall of Fame class of 2021. Um, offensive line, Alan Fenneker. Wide receiver, Calvin Johnson from Detroit. Uh, defensive back, John Lynch. We talked about him earlier on in the show. Uh, quarterback, <laughs> Tom Brady rival, Peyton Manning. Uh, defensive back, Charles Woodson. Another guy, that, another guy that played with Brady. With Brady. In, in Michigan, yeah. yep, yep. And, right. and hates on Brady till this day. Oh, yeah. You know, for, right. for the tuck game rule. Yep, yep. And then um, wide yeah. receiver Drew Pearson, um, who, who's who been waiting for a long time, and he finally got in. And Undrafted yeah. wide receiver. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have been looking at the videos from last year where he, like, got so upset that he didn't make it, you know, again. You know, he was, you know, he had his whole family around waiting for him, and then he didn't oh, make dang. it. Yeah, it's like, I didn't see that. I didn't peep that. Oh. I gotta, I gotta post that on Profans underscore Sports. Um, yeah, and go then follow that on IG. A contributor, Bill Nunn, um, made it. Bill, Bill Nunn is the guy. He's a scout for the Pittsburgh Steelers. A long That's time awesome. scout for Pittsburgh Steelers, and I think he's one of those guys that been drafting amazing receivers. all these receivers you know for so long receivers yeah 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 no shoot no wonder why they've been getting good receivers every, every year. single That's year man good. drafted or undrafted and, they and they get still, they get they're, they're still getting them they get ballers undrafted or drafted them. yep um yeah. and belichick belichick can't get one for for to save his life yeah um <laughs> know, seriously it's unbelievable unreal uh, one one guy that's connected to the Patriots that didn't make the list, um, Richard Seymour, he was left off the class for the second time, um, you know, unfortunately. But I think he might get it next year with, with those guys um, that's coming up. Let's hope so. He deserves to be yeah. in the Hall of Fame. I think he deserves it. You know, stats or not, like that guy, he was an anchor for the three Super Bowl teams that we had in the beginning of Brady's career. You know, without those guys, we don't win those those championships. So, he definitely belongs in there. And it, it's sad because, you know, being with Bill Belichick and Brady, a lot of guys are not going to make the, you know, um, the Hall of Fame just because, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's a lot of guys that are not going to make because they're going to say, oh, he played for Bill Belichick. And because they sacrificed stats for, like, team team success. Yeah, and it was it was the defense, the defense that he was in, too, the defense he was in. Was he his job was to hold the the offensive line hold the line and create space for the linebackers to attack to, to make the plays and, you know and um unfortunately he didn't get the stats but he's a dude he, you know nobody could move him he was he was we don't win those short, without him you know what I mean so um he deserves to be in there for well, sure man they got to get in there no no doubt he's got to get in at, at some point one of the best defensive linemen I've seen play and uh. And when I thought he was really dominant in his career, uh, you know, with, with the Patriots, and uh, you know, after he left, he was still a good player and did his thing. So I think he definitely should be in there. They shouldn't hold that against him. Uh, guys like that have to be in the, the Hall of Fame that you know played exceptionally well. And he, not only was he good against the run, he was also good against the pass as well. And, Listen, so if you're going to let a complete defensive lineman, if you're going to let Eli Manning in, you got to let Richard Seymour in. OK, that's Absolutely. all I'm, I got to say about Big that. Let, let's let's pivot a little bit. Uh, let's go into the NBA. Um, so some NBA news. Right. The NBA All-Star game will be on March 7th. Um, 
LeBron James says that it's a slap in the face because of the coronavirus and guys testing positive all over the, the, the league. And he says he has zero excitement for the game. Um, Giannis actually spoke about it. And, you know, he says, you know, quote, we got to follow the big dog, LeBron, man. The big dog says he has zero excitement, zero energy for the All-Star game. I'm the same way. I want to see my family. And then another, you know, big name came out and, and made a, a statement, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, he said, it is what it is. We all know why we're playing. It's money on the line. It's opportunity to make more money. Just putting money over health right now, pretty much. Um, you know, like, what do you guys think about the NBA having uh, their All-Star game? I mean, same way, same way LeBron feels, same way Kawhi feels, same way um, Giannis feels. I mean, why, why have that? I mean, and you're going to have it in Atlanta. Bro, everybody's going to come back with the coronavirus, man. It's, it's not worth having. Don't have it. We already just having the season. How many people already got sick to the season? You know what I mean? Right. We, we didn't have Jason mm -hmm. for two weeks. You yep. know what I mean? Why, why, why are we risking it? You know, let's not – no. Nah. Leave it alone. Let's not worry about that. Give the players some time off maybe to go enjoy their time with their family for a little bit and then mm -hmm. come back and play the rest of the season. Let's not put people in danger. Um, I don't think it's worth having. I hope I hope they cancel it. I don't know if they're going to cancel it because they already put a date for it. They ain't canceling it. No, no. I think well, I hope the players boycott it or something. I mean – They ain't boycotting. Right. Because the players so shouldn't agree to it. Yeah. They, they, they yeah. agree That's to it. That's crazy, though. How, they, how do they agree to that? I don't even know how they agree to that. Money. I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Guess. Yeah, and certainly, John, like you said, this is what um, what it is and why they decided to play the game. It's a, you know, money grab for the players and for the NBA because they're missing a lot on a lot of money, um, you know, due to this, you know, pandemic season with not, you know, having fans in the building and not, uh, you know, being able to get those, you know, ticket sales. So I think, you know, this is a way that the NBA thinks they can make up for uh, some of that, you know, lost money. But, you know, I'm certainly with glad that they shouldn't have this this game, you know, due to, you know, with what's going on with the pandemic and how it's affected the league uh, with not only the number of guys that have gone it, but with the number of games that, um, you know, have been missed, you know, by, by a lot of teams in, in this league, almost, pretty much every team in the league has had at least multiple games or several games, uh, you know, postponed. being postponed due to, uh, you know, guys on their team, you know, either contracting or actually getting the, you know, COVID-19. So I don't think it's right for them to have this all-star game. And, you know, I'm kind of disappointed that they, you know, agreed to, you know, to have this because I get it's a, you know, excited day for, you know, for the NBA, for the league, and for the players, but it's just not the right year to have it. They should have kept this initial, um, you know, the initial schedule, plan. The, the initial plan when they put out the, the schedule for the first half of the season that they weren't going to have the All Star game uh, and just, just have it the following year because it's just not the right year to have it. Yeah, they should have did their virtual thing, you know, um, say the announcements and all that stuff, and. You know, maybe maybe do like a highlight reel of all the the, the stars that made it. You know what I mean? Like, like the NFL well, didn't the NFL didn't do the Pro Bowl. You know, they had the versus thing, which was yeah. it wasn't that good. It was trash, bro. Yeah, that yeah, was, was garbage. Yeah. That was so boring, yo. I'm like, all right, man. Yo, right, right. that I was like, like one or I two of those, and I'm like, yeah, I'm out. There wasn't even ten thousand people in the room. No, but no, um, no. but I'm not saying the NBA needs to do something like that, but. Do something else. Not that, man. Listen, man. Make a big mashup of all the, you know, do something. You yeah. know what I mean? Keep like, re re replay that. replay some games. Because the players already played mad games at the end of last year, and they had a short in off season. Excuse yeah. me. A short in off right. season. Right. That's another they thing. Could, they could have used right. the time off. Just give them the time off. No, I definitely agree with you guys for sure. Um, yeah, the league's not is doing a disservice to the players right now with this move right here. And I, I agree with you guys. Uh, some some NBA news, the Knicks, they traded for Derrick Rose. So Derrick Rose will now be on a fourth team where Tom Thibodeau is going to be the head coach of. So 
Um, so I'm to so love him, Derek Rose. Oh, he so sure good. does. That's his guy. Love him, Derek Rose. Listen, listen. I seen a meme that said, you know, get yourself a relationship like Tom Thibodeau and Derrick Rose because they'll never leave each other. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> no, no, it's a get you somebody that loves you like like Tom Thibodeau loves oh, Derrick Rose. Rose yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Um, oh, man, I'm surprised you didn't post that on the Pro Fan Sports. I do uh, or something. Right, right. Um, but Kevin, whatever, that's hilarious. Right. Um, more NBA news. Kevin Durant was pulled out the Brooklyn games twice against Toronto due to safety protocols. Actually, he was held out for the first 19 minutes, and then they brought him in, and then they took him out again. Yeah. Um, and he yeah, was yeah. not very happy about that. You know, um, he tweeted at the NBA, you know, to the effect of, you know, people are smart, like, stop with the – stop with the publicity stunt type of thing he said out there. Um, you know, KD's in his feelings, and he probably shouldn't come at the NBA saying certain things, right? But we'll see what happens with that. But um, I thought that was definitely strange. I posted it on ProFans underscore sports. Um, I think, listen, if you're going to hold a guy out for 19 minutes because of safety protocols, you don't let him go in the game, period. Like, why is he even in the building? Yeah, that's yeah not, I mean, that's like, not, hey, that's not risking. You're exposing people. If you think anything, you're exposing people. Like, the whole team could have went, you know what I'm saying? So, um, that whole thing's weird. Apparently, he still has antibodies, right? Which, because he had the coronavirus, now he yeah. has antibodies. So, I don't know why they keep, you know, why they're so worried about him. But, you know, he didn't like that. And um, him and Harden were out the other day. And, I mean, not him. Him and Kyrie were out the other day and Harden didn't. It didn't look too good in that game. Um, some more NBA stuff. The Celtics games, they had a few games, four games since the last time we spoke, right? So they played the Warriors. Did they win against the Warriors? They beat the Warriors, yes. Warriors? Yeah, they did. They, they won by four, 111-107. Right. So 111-107. Uh, they played the Kings, and they lost 116-111. to They played the Clippers. They lost – one nineteen, one fifteen. So Wait, the, they, they won. They won. They won. They won. One yeah, nineteen, one fifteen. Right, and right. then they lost the next game, so they're going win and loss, win and loss. Um, against the Suns, one hundred to ninety one, they failed to reach ninety one points. Jalen Brown was out against the Clippers and the Suns. Um, and against the Suns, it looked like they they really needed him. Peyton Pritchard was back against the Clippers and the Suns. Um. You know, the game against the Suns, he looked more back to himself than the game before, but he was on minutes restrictions, I believe. Uh, Kemba Walker had his best game against the Clippers with 24 games this season. And Carson Edwards also had his best game on this trip with a career, well, with 16 points, which is too shy of his career high um, against the Clippers. Without him, they don't win that. Um, so, you know, the, Clip the, the Celtics have had some success and some struggles over the last couple, well, over the last week with their games. Um, what are you guys seeing, um, especially in our losses? Like, what, what's going on there? Well, I mean, I thought the game, both games against the Warriors and the Clippers, I was pretty um, impressed um, with the way we were playing um, and those wins. Um, the loss against the Suns, I just, as far as we, we almost were never in that game. I feel as never. Though, that game, we just, it never felt as though all oh, the Celtics was gonna win that game, and for I think we were down, double, we were down, yeah, double digits at some point, and we were coming back, but it just it was too late. Um, I don't know about you guys, I like Jason Tatum, but sometimes I feel as though, like the shot he's taking is like he's not open, he's making them, but they're not the best shots. You know what I'm trying to say? He has and, a tendency to do that. Yeah, and, and that bugs me a little. I, I feel as though, I don't know if it's a Brad Stevens thing, but, like, I know you're making them, bro, and that's cool and all, but can we play basketball? Can we, like, have you get an open shot and make the open shot? You know what I'm trying to say? So, I don't know. The team is very up and down right now. Um, I don't like Kimba. Really, he had one good game against the Clippers. That was it. But besides that, he hasn't really looked like himself. Um, Kemba can't even play back-to-back -back games. It's, I don't know, I'm not feeling good about this, this season for the Celtics. Yeah, no, I definitely hear what you're saying, Vlad, about 
Jason Tatum. It seems like sometimes as much as, you know, I love his game too. And, uh, you know, he does, you know what I'm saying, make tough shots. I'm sure he's a good tough shot maker. But Like make the tough shot when you have to make them. But exactly. like at the not end of the game the or time. something, That's... you know what I mean? Yeah, but like not just all your – I'm not saying all his sort of tough shots, but – like what am I watching? You just told, you know what I mean. Like, can we play basketball? Can we get some open shots? Like, right, right. The shot selection is not the best, and sometimes uh, you're right. The decision making isn't, um, you know, where where it needs to to be. You know, w- with him or where we would like to see it. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, that's still a part of his game that he definitely needs to work on is, you know, decision making and, you know, and playmaking and, right, moving the ball and, like you said, having a better feel for the game and, you know, and picking, you know, your spots um, mm-hmm. as far as, like you said, when to shoot and, you know, when to pass and move the ball and uh, and get other guys, you know, involved um, as well. So, you know, definitely, you know, he's still working on that. That's a work in progress with him. He'll get better um, on that as the season goes on so I'm not too worried about it uh you know but you know definitely Brad needs to you know l- let him know that and uh continue to emphasize that uh what, as far as the you know losses go um I I, I think you know d- definitely the you know defense hasn't been well it was good against the Suns because they only let up a uh, Hundred, you know, points, but against the Kings, I don't think it was uh, very good. I think they definitely missed uh, Marcus Smart in that game, uh, in particular, because you know those guards of the um, Kings were going off. Particularly DeAndre Fox, just you know, had a field day and you know, and, and pretty much scored at will and got to wherever he wanted to. So I think they certainly, you know, missed you know Marcus Smart, their top you know defender. Um, that game, uh, you know, I think, right, with, you know, th- there's been some, like, sloppy play as far as, like, you know, turnovers and, and stuff and, uh, you know, not, you know, taking care of the ball or, you know, not really um, taking, you know, the, the the best shots that they could, you know, be, be taken. Uh, so I think, you know, with those losses, it's, Certainly, you know, evident that, you know, this team still has a long way to go and, you know, needs some work, you know, not only on the defensive end, but also offensively, uh, too. Uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, Jim Milwaukee, I had that really good game against uh, the Clippers. But, you know, other than that, he hasn't really done that much, you know, for us, I think. You know, it's even safe to say, as much as I hate to say it, that he's a liability um, for this team right now. I think, you know, and he's just really not, you know, playing at the level that, you know, at an all-star level, the level we expect him to play at um, and has, you know, been consistent. And so, you know, he, and particularly with Browns out, he needs to, you know, step up his game and, uh, you know, play even better and, you know, besides the Clippers game, he, you know, didn't do uh, that. So, um, you know, hopefully they get JB soon because they definitely miss him, you know, have having him out there. Uh, they, he definitely needs to be on the court soon because, you know, he's definitely one of their two best players and uh, a big presence when he's on the court and takes the pressure off of Jason Tatum, uh, you know, without question. But, uh, yeah, I think they just need to, you know, play better and be more consistent um, on both, you know, ends of the floor. Uh, I think attention to detail is still a problem for them. You know, you know, sometimes their energy and lack of focus and effort is not, you know, where it needs to be. So those are things they're still going to have to continue to keep working on uh, moving forward as the season goes along. Uh, but... I mean, oh, this is a tough road trip for them. So, I guess going two and two is okay. But, um, you know, they they got one more game. Could, right, right. They got one more game against, you know, Utah. Hopefully, yeah. they can win that to have a winning record on this, uh, you know, West Coast trip. 
Uh, we'll see how that game goes. But, uh, no, they definitely need to be playing, uh, you know, better. Um, you know, and and definitely need other guys need to step up. I'm glad Carson Edwards needs to step up, but hopefully he can do that if, you know, mo- moving forward and be more consistent. So I think that's what it comes down to with this team. Let me yeah, ask I, you guys a I, question I, real quick. Well, so what's going on with um, Jalen Brown's knee? He had left knee soreness. Um, that's what I From saw. What? Uh, he, I think he banged his his knee the game prior to uh, the Clippers. Mm. So yeah. it's the Kings game. Yeah, mm-hmm. hey, in that game. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I thought we don't we don't need another guy with knee issues. And I thought they was resting no, him, but not. it doesn't seem like that's the case. You know, so it looks like some. I mean, Brad Stevens said he was looking better, but he always says that shit, man. And then they right, come back right. and exactly. like a shell of themselves. But um, all year I haven't. I haven't seen the Celtics play Celtics basketball all year. We haven't put a complete game together all year, you know, and I'm talking about like defensively and offensively, right? We we're at the back of the pack, you know, defensively, you know, and we're not holding guys um, on defense basically. Right. And then even the games that we win, we're like struggling because we struggle to close out games. You know, because the teams, they always make a comeback somehow. You know, we'll be up 18 points. And then by by the time five minutes left in the game, you know, the, the other team is down by, like, five points. And we got to, like, claw to win the game, which which is not ideal. You know, the game's already hard in the league. And sometimes I feel like we do – we make it harder on ourselves. Um, you know, I was impressed that they won against – they won against Steph Curry and the Clippers because Steph Curry was getting them buckets. You know, Ooh, sure was. He was giving them that buckets, game. right? Okay. And they came back, and they um adjusted, right? They adjusted, and and did some good things, and actually pulled out the win. Um, Jason Tatum has been great since he's been back. You know, scoring at least twenty every game that see he's been back since, and carrying the team. Um, but sometimes I feel like he disappears at some points of the game, and he's not really giving us much. Um. Kimba Walker, I think he went four for twenty, or something like that. He went four um, for won twenty the against the Suns on um on Sunday. Yeah, which is terrible. And you yeah, know, awful, a lot of awful. Celtics, a lot of Celtics fans want him gone. Um, I saw a headline today: Is uh, Peyton Pritchard outplaying Kimba Walker? You know, and I'm like, wow, man, really? People already saying that? That's too early for that all day. It's, right, exactly. Oh, my God. It, it is early. Come on. Right, right. Barry, hey. you're on these pages with me online. You see what's going on. You see what they're talking about. Right? Trade them. Oh, Kemba needs to – you know what I'm saying? It's like, dude, the guy, hey, first damn, of all, already. he's come they back from an injury. Out of Boston. That's crazy. I mean, are you surprised? Uh, no, not really. Uh, but – I mean, at the same time, I think it's, you know, ridiculous, those, uh, you know, suggestions that, you know, people are coming up with, you know, saying that they should trade, you know, Kimball Walker. Uh, I mean, I don't really see, you know, I don't really, you know, I don't really even think that's, you know, the best thing to do at this moment and see why they would, do that right now. Well, they they want Brad Wanamaker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's playing for the Warriors now. He's the backup to Seth Curry, right? Why would they want him back? And uh, I mean, they just haven't gotten any good, you know, besides Payne Pritchard, consistent play at the point guard. At the point guard, Teague's been awful, um, as well, Jeff Teague, you know, man, as, as well, and. Marcus Smart wasn't, you know, sh- shooting it and, and playing that, you know, well offensively before he got injured. So he was I a think, good facilitator, though. Right, right, and you I know, think they certainly do, you know, m- miss that, um, you know, in the aspect of the, you know, of the offense of when he's out there. Uh, but I certainly think, you know, them saying these fans lose their mind. You know how no, they do, man. Are on the uh on, on the internet on facebook and in these groups say they talk out of their ass and you know <laughs> and say all these ignorance types uh takes and 
um, and stuff. So I don't really right. pay much attention to it. So some good stuff, you know, from the Celtics. Um, Tristan Thompson has started to play like Tristan Thompson the last couple of games, you know, grabbing boards, um, putting shots back. Uh, I still need him you to know. score like 15 points a game or something. Hey, but I he's think he scored his like career. That, that he's that's never, he's, he's never been that, but he right, did score he's 17 he's points he, the other day. Can he just score at least in the double digits, like 10 points or something? Can he give us a double that's, double? That's more his his line. You know what right. I'm saying? He's he's I like a 12 he's and doing. eight guy, 12 he's and nine four guy. Points yesterday. Um, right. He had a bad game yesterday, but on this trip overall, he's came up and he's actually playing a lot better. Um, one guy that we got to give him his props to Sammy Ogilvy. You know, he's doing his thing, um, hitting timely shots. Um, Carson Edwards Sammy's stepped better. up. I don't know if he's – he's better this year for sure. He's he, – absolutely. He's improved, right? You know, some of these games we've won, we don't win it without Sammy. Um, Carson Edwards, he looked like he has some kind of life to him lately. We'll see how that goes. And, you know, Finally. to the detriment of uh, Neesmith, you know, who started hitting some shots and then now he's disappeared the last few games. So I feel um, bad for that kid. Yeah, he's been a disappointment. I thought he was if you supposed if to be you, really good. If he's you the come best in, shooter in the draft. If you come in exactly. and you come in and they tell you you're the best shooter in the draft, and then this this white kid that was drafted, you know, seventeen positions be uh, after you, he's coming in, he's lighting up the the the, the league, and he's hey. he's a better shooter than you right now. What did I say? This Peyton Pritchard kid, you know, I've been on it since day one. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't believe us, go back to our channel. You know, like, I knew this guy was a baller. He he was not scared. And he's proved everything I was saying from the jump. You know. Yeah, that, um, kid, that kid is not bad. No, he's not bad at all. No. Bad. He can hoop, for sure. He can hoop. Um, He might. He might end up with like a 50, 40, 90 or something like that stat line. Yeah, yeah. He'd be I the first he rookie. That. Yeah. Right. He'd be the first rookie to do it, but that's that's pretty early in the game to say something like that. Right. There's um, a lot of got a long season left to go. A lot of basketball left. Yeah. All in all, man, you know, I think that the Celtics have had the least home games in the league so far. So, you know, a lot of the times they're struggling. They're struggling on the road. And I see that. Jalen Brown is really needed because last game we were we were scoring a better percentage from the three than we were at the two, and Jalen Brown has been a mid-range killer all season, you know. And without him, we haven't been able to do shit. Even with Jason Tatum and his, you know, vintage um, fadeaways, he hasn't been able to do much backs, yeah. in those setbacks. But um, we definitely miss Jalen Brown, and hopefully, you know, the team plays better. But all in all, you know. For the schedule that they've had, you know, facing all the top teams in the league so far and being on the road most of the time, you know, they still have a respectable record and they're still in, in playoff picture. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to them doing better in upcoming games and hopefully we get Jalen Brown back because um, he's needed for the team. Um, let's move on into the MLB. Um, Dustin Pedroia, the laser show, the legend. He announced his retirement. He had a whole press conference, um, you know, and, I mean, he was a legend here, man. He was the, the, the little engine that could, right, the smallest guy on the field at all times and outperforming a lot of people, right? Um, and I think he said, quote, but there was a reason I was first one dressed at 5.30 for 7 o'clock game. I always tell my teammates that you never know if the game is going to start early. My biggest thing in my mind was that this could be my last game and you don't know. That's the best way I approached it from Little League on. I had the best time playing. So, and you could tell, you know, that that guy was ready every game that he played, every game that he was healthy for. He went all out. And sometimes that's like a detriment to um to them because they go so hard, you know, their body starts breaking down early. And that's that's pretty much what happened to uh, Dustin Pedroia. One guy that's actually reminds me of his work ethic is um, Peyton Pritchard, and I hope that's not a thing that happens to him, you know, because that guy, like I said, he was dribbling till his fingers bled. So, you know, we know he takes that stuff seriously. But, you know, congratulations to Dustin Pedroia. You know, he had a great career in Boston. He spent his whole career here, 
And, you know, he's gave back the knowledge to the team because he was, you know, coaching with the team um, while he was on the roster as well. So, you know, it is what it is. And farewell to him. Hopefully he's he's on the roster as a coach. Um, Trevor Bauer signed with the Dodgers, um, a three-year, $102 million deal. So the rich get richer. You know, that roster is already loaded and now they're even more loaded. So um, if they don't go to another chip and win it, that's a bust for them again, you know, because it was Absolutely. the same thing last year, right? And, but they you know, did win it last year. They so did win least, it. I'm just saying if they don't win it this year, again, it's a bust, you know, because they, they no have doubt. the roster to do it. You know what I'm saying? Baseball, it is hard to repeat, though, just like in any sport. It's hard to go back to back and repeat. For sure, man. We saw in the Super Bowl, uh, you know, on Sunday. So For sure. But, I mean, they definitely have this squad to do it, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, and now we're going to go into the NHL where Barry has, um, I think, the, the Bruins played three games. What were the scores of those games? Like, who they play? Um, would you see in those games? So, yes, they played um, in those three games they had this week. The, the first game was against the Washington Capitals, uh, which is the new team that Zidane Chara is on. And uh, they ended up winning that game 5-3, to three, uh, you know, which was an impressive win for them. Uh, then they played the Philadelphia Flyers twice um, in Philly. Um, and they actually beat them both times. The first game they played them, they beat them four to three, um, and in overtime, they, they you know came back and won. And then in the last game that they played against Philly, the second game, uh, they beat them two to one, uh, as well. So as far as what I'm seeing in these games, uh, well. The first two were kind of similar because they're getting off to slow starts. Uh, and both of these games, they were down, you know, by multiple goals early in the game. Uh, the first game, they were down three to nothing. You know, the Daniel Charles scored, scored um, for the Capitals. Uh, and then they got a couple of other goals from you know, the other players and stuff, and they really had it going early, and the Bruins just didn't look good, um, you know, right out of the gate and at the start of the game. Uh, and then, surprisingly, in that new game, they came back and scored five straight unanswered goals uh, to come back and win that game uh, five to three, which was definitely impressive because, you know, Washington's a really good team and, you know, they had just beaten us, uh, you know, in the game before, uh, you know, when we played them. So um, it looked like they were going to beat us again and uh, it was going to be a blowout. And the Bruins came back and showed their, you know, resiliency as they had this season and, you know, and, and, can, and played the, you know, a good two quarters, I would say. I'd say they definitely started playing better their second uh, period, as I say, I shouldn't say quarters, it's periods in hockey. Uh, so, they, you know, they, they started getting some momentum. Uh, I think they got a goal right at the end of the second period to cut the lead. And then uh, and, and then they had – and then the third period is when they took over. They were, you know, down three to one, and then they had four straight goals um, in the third period. And – you know, kind of took over that game and ended up winning. David Pasternak was definitely the player of that game. This kid's been on fire, guys. Like, he's been balling, like, killing it. He had two goals and two points. Uh, so he had, which means he had two goals and an assist as well on um, on one of the goals that uh, was scored by, and you know, by someone else. So he certainly been, you know, playing exceptionally well since he came back from uh, missing the start of the season. So, uh, and he's been their best player, to say the least, um, you know, since he's been back. So that was certainly a good win for them. And the uh, first game that happened with the Bruins, I mean, with the Flyers, excuse me, um, 
you know, there was a comeback win again. They were down three goals. Uh, again, they, they can they can't keep putting themselves in this position, but not well. Actually, they got out. They scored the first goal, and then they got, you know, out. Then the Flyers scored three goals um, unanswered, and then uh, finally the uh, Bruins ended up, you know, coming back and scoring, you know, three goals to take the, uh, you know, to win the game. Uh, Pasternak had a hat trick this game, so he played an even better game than the Capitals game. He was, you know, certainly a force in this game. And then Bergeron had the game winner uh, in this in this game in overtime. And Gucci scored 12 seconds into overtime and beat to win the, uh, you know, the game for the Bruins. So the captain, uh, you know, got it done and, you know, was clutch as uh, he always is. So I think, you know, w with the Bruins here, uh, you know, they definitely are r r really showing that they're the comeback kids and, you know, good at coming back from, you know, deficits. Uh, but, you know, they just need to know how to start games better and, you know, you know, and, and, and play, you know, at their pace and control the game better and, you know, not let these teams get off to good starts and and be, you know what I'm saying, and, and get out to these leads because it's not every game you're going to come back from, uh, you know, for, from deficits like that. And luckily, their last game, they didn't, um, you know, get out to an early deficit. They had scored the first goal and then the uh, fly scored uh, the next one and then the Bruins scored, uh, you know, the – second goal which was the game winner uh with with that so as far as who scored those goals it was uh you know Brad Marshawn had the first one for the Bruins and then Sean um Corrali had the second goal it was was the game winner for the Bruins so the Bruins are playing well the that they're you know been I got off to a really good start this season and uh and yeah, it, it, it's been certainly fun to you know watch them play, fun to watch Dave Pasternak uh, play. I'm you know becoming more of a hockey guy and a hockey fan. So um, that definitely um, hope to see them continuing to you know play this way as long as they don't get off to those slow starts and having to you know keep coming back. But I think other than that, I'm liking what I'm seeing from. Uh, from the Boston Bruins. So hopefully they can keep it going, uh, you know, moving forward into their next games uh, for this coming week. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate that. You know, that's for, that's for our hockey fans right there. Barry just gave you a little breakdown of what happened. Um, and Barry, you're going to have to prepare yourself to speak again because um, we're at the famous B Money Lifestyle Person of the Week. And yes, um, yes. I think we can... We can we, we probably all know who the B Money Lifestyle Person of the Week is, um, because of Barry's hat. So let, let's hear. It. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, de definitely representing today. Uh, yeah. So I think the B Money Lifestyle Person of the Week is a pretty obvious one. Uh, th th this week I didn't really have to look really into, um, you know, people who are you know candidates and qualified for. You know, for, for this honor this week, I think, you know, we, we just have to give it to, you know, to the GOAT, to Tom Brady. Uh, we're on winning his seventh, you know, Super Bowl, uh, which is the most Super Bowls that um, anybody has won, any player or team in the NFL has, you know, won in the history of the league. Uh, and you know, getting his fifth, you know, Super Bowl MVP, more most Super Bowl MVPs that anybody um, has also won as well. Um, and, you know, and also doing it at 43, um, which is impressive because I don't know if you guys knew this, at 43, Dan Marino and Joe Montana were both, were elected, into the Hall of Fame at that age. 
And like we said, Peyton Manning, who's roughly around the same age as, uh, you know, Tom Brady, was just elected into the Hall of Fame this past weekend. And yet Tom Brady's still winning Super Bowls and just right. won his seventh. Well, um, before the the Super Bowl, they were interviewing um, Brad Stevens, um, and Brad mm -hmm. Stevens is forty four years old, and which is one year older than Tom Brady, and it's just to see Brad Stevens to see Tom Brady, you're like, what? Those guys are the same age, you know? what I mean, it's like it's things crazy. you will never see again. Yeah, yeah, right. For real, for real. I mean, yeah. Look at look at Luke McCown. He's about to be a head coach. He's 43. <laughs> Brian, Brian Leftwich. <laughs> Byron Brian Leftwich. Leftwich. Used to battle with Tom yeah. Brady. And now he, he backed up um what Walthersberger. That's right, right. E exactly. And now he's reading the offensive coordinator. I want to see Byron as a Brady. I want to see Byron as a head coach, man. Yeah, no, I think he could be could be a head coach. Down um, the line, someday. down the line. Yeah, moving forward. Yeah, definitely still. Needs to get a few more years, you know, of experience, you know, being a coordinator and an assistant coach. But he can certainly get there one day. But uh, no, I think you know, with you know, the Super Bowl that he's won, Tom Brady, and making history, being the first, um, you know, leading the, the first team to win a home Super Bowl in their home stadium, and uh, you know, doing it with two. Um, different teams, uh, you know, which is him and Peyton Manning, have, you know, really been the only ones, at least in the modern era, that have done it with multiple, uh, you know. Except teams. Peyton Manning didn't win MVP in the Super Bowl. That's, that's true. He did not. Right, right. He, he won, won one, separation. Right? He won one. Yeah, he won Bowl one, but the one with the, the Broncos, first. he didn't. That was um, Von Miller. Von Miller. Yep, yep. That's right. He Sure did. I knew it was someone on that defense. So, uh, you know, it's, it was deservingly so. So I think I just wanted to commend him, you know, for his greatness. Uh, and I think, you know, definitely he deserved to win uh, the B, the B Money Lifestyle the week, week and win that seven, uh, you know, Super Bowl that he did. Uh, think you know we're seeing something special and something that we've never seen in sports before someone continue to be this great at you know this point of their career uh when, when they're past their prime and they're still able to play at a high level and still being able to win right so, right right uh, you know I think you know he he definitely wanted yeah, he, I definitely wanted to give him this award because, I mean, I think that it was only right for, you know, the Super Bowl week to give it, you know, to the GOAT, uh, you know, after getting his, uh, you know, the Super Bowl. So congrats to the GOAT on being the Be Money Lifestyle person of the week. Uh, and that's definitely that Be Money Lifestyle. Yeah, we'll make sure we mail that to him, okay? Um, <laughs> for sure, I have to maybe get like a certificate or something, right? Right, right, right. Or, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, and that's gonna be it for us for episode 47. You know, so if you're still watching, thanks for the support. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share and comment on the videos. Those we appreciate y'all, and we'll catch y'all on episode 48. Have a good one, y'all. That's right. Have a good, we'll get, get a good week, guys. See you next week. Peace out.